and now return to the Ace Attorney Chronicles. Once a rogue, always a rogue, I say. A different breed to us law abiding citizens. As only two bullets were found at the scene, I would say the whole case is done and dusted. You don't need a stereoscope to see the truth here. Every which way you look at it, it was the pickpocket. I never imagined that simple operation would cause me such grief. The accused attempted a theft on the previous day. I can see I'm in for a busy day ahead. I am ballistics expert. I have seen many shootings. There is nothing I do not know about guns. Hmm. I would do to seem there is little remaining room for doubt. I have to admit, I was rather bowled over by the argument but put forward by the chap in black. But when that fell apart like a house of cards, I saw that I jolly well been hoodwinked. Well, no more. Uh, the whole courtroom is turning against me. It's not fair, Iris. That prosecutor's being mean. Just because Ginny's done something she shouldn't have done in the past, it doesn't make her a murderer. Keep getting the A sound wrong. Oh well, allow me to savor this fruity vintage while I savor the spectacle of your fruitless debate on the matter. Here's to the truth coming out, eventually. Eventually. That's enough preamble. Counsel, proceed with the summation examination. Yes, my lord. Just because Miss Lestrade has a history of pickpocketing, she must be guilty of murder, is that what you're saying? Uh, well... Are all members of the British Army so quick to judge? I beg your pardon? Are you mocking Her Majesty's Armed Forces, the greatest military organization in the world? And no, I am simply illustrating my point. Making assumptions about people because they're a soldier or a pickpocket is wrong and dangerous. Well, yes, I might have a point there, I suppose. But let's not forget the girl's already showed and she had it in her bef from before. She's clearly a criminal sort through and through, can't deny it. Uh, when you say that she'd shown she'd had it in her, are you referring to this? Exactly. I tried to swipe that only a day earlier, hmm? Or am I mistaken? Not exactly. Why didn't we ever do the... the probably because I never looked at it, huh? Given that I was actually there at the time, it's hard to refute that. Let's actually maybe look at the disc. I guess I never examined this thing. Oh, Runo, look. This is blood. Yes, you're right. Just a small smear, but definitely blood. Actually, I feel as though I might have noticed that before. Aha, uh -huh. then it's my time to shine again. I thought I'd be waiting forever. All right, hold still with that disc, Runo. Can we get this done quickly, Iris? In a flash. It's green. Oh, a lovely bright shade again. Wait, that color. What is it? It's just that green. It... It's not the first time we've seen that color, is it? Blood Sample's portfolio has been updated in the court record. Isn't that, uh... We already looked at this one, yeah? Well, McKinley, that's the man you defended in a court a couple months ago, isn't it, Runo? Yes. Or rather mistakenly defended. I wonder what his name is doing on the back of this disc. It's a question I'd love to know the answer to myself. And we can't peel it off. Okay. Let me take... Oh, I gave away my... Okay, here it is. Right, this is the one we couldn't determine, but if it was Sholmes, he would have been there if the bullet had passed through him. Like, that, that was an area of contention from the very beginning, right? We didn't know... So we know that's Mason, we know blue is Windebank. 
I mean, it says green, so one can only assume it's the same color green. It's not making a distinction. This seems brighter, though. It could just be an illusion. I'm thinking that's Sholmes's and that we're going to find something out about that. Okay. I've never actually seen the real thing. I can't wait to have a closer look at it. What are, you, what are we talking about again? Oh yes, of course. What are we talking about again? Mr. Sholmes did use his caramel bars to make a copy of the disc, didn't he? and then ordered every type of music box he could find from across Europe. We still don't know what tune it plays, though, do we? But I'd love to see how the original compares to Hurley's copy. A gilded's disc. Could it be a clue somehow? Perhaps we should examine it in more detail. I just did. Oh, as only two of the bullets are found on the scene... Hold it! It's the number of bullets that has you convinced. Only two bullets were fired, and the two guns that fired them have been examined by the police. When the parlor maid asks me how many are invited for dinner, I always tell her to count the table settings. And well, that's logical, I suppose. Although... Yes? Sometimes after dining, crockery does go missing. One or two guests rather like the fine china. Does your employer dine with thieves? So I suppose. If there was another bullet somewhere of which we were unaware, I'd have to reconsider my position. That must be inside of Sholmes then, and we're going to have the doctor to talk to. A third bullet somewhere on the scene. Could that be possible? It's possible. I hope that's what I selected. Unfortunately, only two bullets were discovered by the police during that investigation. Yes, I know. Right. I did not select that one, apparently. I couldn't imagine the good men of Scotland Yard would have overlooked anything. I missed a bullet while I was cleaning his lordship's office. Well, I should receive a sound scolding, I don't doubt. And he should receive a visit from the police, perhaps. It sounds like a crime scene to me. Hmm, a third bullet. It would completely turn things around if there was one, wouldn't it? Oh, I'm the wrong boys. Do you think we might find one lying around somewhere? In the fart of thrones? You don't need a stereoscope to see the truth here. Hold it! So if I've understood correctly, you need two pictures. A left eye one, and a slightly different right eye one. Exactly. Then you can see the scene in three dimensions. Like this. So if we have two bullets, I don't suppose you can see anything useful with them. Hmm, I think you'll find that no matter how much you squint, the truth of the situation always looks the same here. The only person who could have shot the victim is that girl in the dock. How can you be so sure of that? Think about it. The Skulkin brothers shot the great detective, didn't they? Yes, that's been mentioned once or twice. Well then, surely it's coming into focus now, isn't it? This is a waste of time. I'm not going to change this man's mind anytime soon. Thanks for the game heavy-handedly telling me. Hold it! Not the bar to pry on. Would you please stop muttering about things that have nothing to do with this trial, sir? The defendant's life is on the line here. Yeah, well, the thing is, I couldn't really say that it has nothing to do with this trial, to be honest. Huh? I mean, there's no question that the man was shot, but the bullet had simply vanished from his stomach. It's quite inexplicable, don't you think? Hey, you almost don't want to ask, but this surgery you've been muttering about all this time... You were operating on... What was the fellow's name now? Mr. Herlick? Uh, no, Herlock. Uh, no, uh, Herlock. Herlock Sholmes, by any chance? Yes, good lord. It was that Herlock fellow. What? You're the surgeon that operated on Mr. Sholmes? That's right. Using the very latest anesthesia techniques, might, might add, uh, it was a fairly major op, I can tell you. This is crazy. Let me see. The fellow was brought in not long after midnight, if I remember correctly. And they said he'd been shot by some criminal or other, so I opened him up like a shot. But the funny thing is, I went over his insides with a fine tooth comb, and I couldn't find the bullet anywhere. So I'm afraid I had to throw up my hands and just stitch the fellow back up. 
I hate to state the obvious, but... Yes? Surely that's because the bullet is still at the scene of the shooting. The counsel for the defense is correct. As is clearly shown in this photographic print. The bullet that the Skulkin brothers fired at Mr. Sholmes hit him in the stomach region. Then it exited his body and lodged into the shop wall where the calendar was hanging by the door. Oh, this is Ryunosuke's voice, goddammit! <laughs> I think you'll find it's really quite simple if you just consider the problem three-dimensionally. Uh, who do you think I am, son? Um, well, juror number four is about the best I can do. As soon as I saw the wound in the man's stomach, I flipped him over. Like a pancake. Are, are you saying that you checked his back? Of course I did, and there wasn't a trace of injury. No sign that the bullet had left the body at all. What? That's the point. The only logical conclusion was that the bullet was still somewhere in the man's in it. Which is exactly why I said about slicing him up. And I'm still none the wiser even now. How many times do I have to say it? Can somebody please explain how it happened? Can somebody please solve the mystery? Almost as much of a mystery as how this jury was put together. The mystery of where that bullet ended up is infuriating. Where's an expert when you need one? Well, should we just go ahead and... Objection! This doesn't sound like it's gonna work. Sorry, Albaden can't accept that as squadron leader. What? All fighting for a common cause, don't you know, my, dude, my chaps? And no way they'd contradict one another. I can go, Mr. Foreman. I will refrain from personal attacks on the jury based solely on your own frustrations, Counsel. Yeah, the real frustrating thing is I thought I'd identified a genuine discrepancy there. There are all, a lot of questionable characters in the Garadab Squadron. You might have to listen to what they have to say a few times before it starts to make sense. Yes, and I press them on anything that sounds suspicious. That's the way forward here. Still, can we really be labeling members of the jury as questionable? I guess I can press him on this further, then. Hold it! Mr. Sholmes' surgeon is on the jury? I've experienced some coincidences recently, but this is ridiculous. I'm as surprised as anyone. But there's no question that Mr. Sholmes was shot. Well, uh, that's what the police told me when they brought him in. How bad, was his How bad were his injuries, Doctor? He was in a bad way. He'd lost a huge amount of blood, you know. And I suspect he was shot at quite a close range, too. His skin was badly burnt around the point of entry. Burnt? As I said, I flipped the fellow over and examined his back, and there was no sign of an exit wound. Which is why I thought I'd better locate the lug and pop it out. And yet you say you found no bullet inside the patient. Well, I wouldn't have done, would I? Because it's in the wall of the pawnbrokers. Oh, but how did it get there? I need someone to sort this mystery before it drives me to insanity. If only there was some expert in ballistics who could help, even if he looked extremely untrustworthy. I'm beating over the head that you need to talk to the sixth man who said he could recognize anything and knew anything about a gun! So, we have a disappearing bullet on our hands. The accused attempted a theft of the previous... You know what, just fuck it, let's just go to this. I'm a ballistics expert, I have many shootings. Okay. Bullet! I thought you were just a tourist. Good day. I am visiting London for sightseeing. I would like to take bus to Crystal Tower, please. There's no way he's just a visiting tourist. So, you're a ballistics expert. Who knew? I have much experience with guns. Ah. I've lived through many... How do you say? Um, extreme... Uh, violent death of... Uh, no. Blood of... Um, ah, extreme violent bloodbaths, perhaps. Da, those extreme violent bloodbaths. The English is a very difficult tongue. Considering the sort of people you associate with, I'm surprised you still have a tongue. Anyway, if you have questions about bullets and guns, you ask me. There is nothing I do not know. No mystery I cannot solve. He's very confident in his knowledge of guns, that's for sure. But if possible, please, only in Russian language. He's not very confident in his knowledge of English, though, is he? 
No, still, we should bear it in mind. He's our man if there's a mystery about guns or bullets. Really? So now I put those two together? Van Zeeks has managed to convince everyone. We have eliminated the impossible, he said, but he hasn't. If we're going to fight back, we need more material. And we have to fight back. We have to turn this trial around again. Yes, 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 yes. I guess I can pit pit him. Pit him versus this one then, eh? Objection! Those two statements clearly contradict the idea that all I do is pit jurors against each other. Uh, ballistics expert. Pitting P I T T. On the night in question, Mr. Sholmes was shot by one of the Skulkin brothers. But since there was no sign of an exit wound on his back, we must assume the bullet didn't pass through him. However, no bullet was found lodged in Mr. Sholmes's body either. Furthermore, it deflected. A bullet was found lodged in the wall of the shop where Mr. Sholmes was shot. Juror number six. Hello, I, my name is Wilhelm. A place to meet you. This apparent contradiction in the facts that is so clearly troubling juror number four. Are you able to explain the mystery? I have seen a very similar situation in Motherland. It was night. There was blizzard. I was running away along the mountain road in freezing cold. Golly! The snow was piling high on both sides of the road. It was very narrow and dangerous. My pursuers had hunting rifles and they were on dog sleds. Mental note, don't ask too many questions. I was shot from behind and I fell down in snow. And this situation was very similar to what I hear today from doctor. They could not find a bullet in my body. And no sign of, how do you say, exit wound. Then, then where did the bullet go? The bullet never hit me. Well, if it never hit you, why did you fall down? The bullet hit frozen wall of ice very close to my side. What? One small piece, very sharp, broke away from lump of ice and pierced my body. It made deep wound that looks like just like bullet wound. Good gracious! Of course, a piece of ice quickly melted inside me, and that is solution to mystery of disappearing bullet. But, but that doesn't answer the question at all. Huh? The shooting happened in a pawnbroker shop. On some snowy mountain road in another country? Just an idea, but we might not be looking at exactly the same scenario here. You know, where exactly was Harley shot again? Uh, well, according to the report, in his stomach. Sort of around this area, I think. Well, that's precisely where he always wears a little pouch on his belt. A pouch? Actually, I might have noticed something like that. Yes, a pouch. It's where he keeps three glass files of very dangerous chemicals that he uses in his investigations. Nani? Hontoka. Uh, Doctor, where is the pouch Mr. Sholmes was wearing? Actually, uh, Masaka. Well, the fellow had nothing like that on his person when he arrived at the hospital, as far as I can remember. If I may. Lord Van Zeeks? While I realize it is forbidden for the prosecution to interject during a submission examination, I do not know where your voice has gone, sir. You're copying what's-his-face. I would like to inform the defense that I have pouch in the pouch in question at the end of the chamber outside the courtroom. Uh, sorry? As I understand it, when the police arrived on the scene and found Mr. Sholmes injured, they removed the pouch in order to assess the wound. Uh, thank goodness. I thought I was getting forgetful for a moment. Since then, it's been in my safekeeping along with all other evidence we're adding to the case. I can personally vouch for the fact that it has not been touched since the incident occurred. Very well. While extremely unconventional during a summation examination, I must demand the prosecution presents the item in question with all speed. Being poor of Mr. Herlock Holmes's pouch. Mm, I see. 
So this is the pouch worn by Mr. Shones on the night in question, is it? Look at that. One of the files is broken and the leather around it is scorched black. It's almost as if the file exploded. Exploded? So, that night, the bullet from the Skulkin Brothers' gun struck Mr. Sholmes's pouch. And it was the glass file exploding that caused the fellow's injuries. This bullet did not penetrate the victim, but was deflected into wall of shop. Still, only gives us two bullets. A delightfully complex aroma. Well, it would appear one mystery has been solved at least. Though it has no bearing on the truth of this case. The bungling and burgling brothers shot the detective, and the accused shot the pawnbroker. And the permanent facts of the case remain unaltered. Um. But at least the mystery solved. I can sleep easy tonight. Thank you, young man. Uh, thank you very much. I'm glad I could help. Due to its bearing on the conundrum, just solve the court will sequester this scruffy pouch as evidence. Hurley's pouch isn't scruffy. Sholmes's pouch has been entered into the court record. We should probably look at that. Uh, the summation examination can wait just a minute. This file has been smashed to pieces. Presumably, this is where the bullet struck. As soon as the bullet hit the chemical in the file, there would have been a really big explosion. A big explosion? Well, Harry's potions and chemicals are amazingly useful for the investigation work he does, but they're also quite tricky to handle. Safely, at least. They're very dangerous. Oh. I'm sure that when his file broke, the chemical inside would have ignited. Note to self, always walk on the right-hand side of Shorms in the future. The left is the danger zone. I mean, there is... Um, does that look like a bullet to you? Oh, look, there's a hole here at the back. It doesn't look much like a bullet hole, but certainly something's ripped through the leather with great force. Something must have pierced it somehow to have left this hole behind. Yes, it looks that way. Mr. Sholmes and his pouch both took a beating, didn't they? It's the glass from the... the, uh... lamp. Glass shot through there, but the bullet is right here. It's really scorched badly just here. Oh, the strap is broken, look! This must be where the bullet hit, then. Let me see. Yeah, you think maybe we could... What the? Iris, look! Behind where the broken file was. Do you see it? Ah, that's... a Skulkin Brothers bullet! What a stroke of luck that it hit his pouch. This is an amazing discovery. What this means is, there were three bullets fired at Windabanks that night. We found exactly what that juror was talking about. The third bullet! It's time to press that juror again, I think. Third bullet has been entered into the record. Very good. It would appear the defense is somewhat struggling to alter the opinion, hmm? Please, my lord. A little more time. I just found what I need. After all, that's a new piece of evidence. It could be a valuable clue, and you can't afford to overlook anything here, Dionosuke. There's still a way to turn this around. Somehow, I'm sure of it. We don't need to talk to you. We don't need to talk to you. Fucking... There. It's the number of bullets that have you convinced. Although... Some crockery... Okay. There was another bullet somewhere. I'd have to reconsider my position. A third bullet. Could that be... Oh, fuck me! Ah, 
Stop fucking talking. All right. Oh my god. There just needs to be an an autocomplete. Hold it. God. So irritating. I'm going to use the click and not the space. Because then it won't automatically click this stupid answer. I can prove it. Allow me to show you, then, the third bullet. Take that! Here it is. We discovered it just now. Yes, on the night in question in Windabank's pawnbrokery, another bullet was fired. What is this new trickery, you Nipponese conjurer? Where did you find that bullet? It was lodged inside Mr. Sholmes's pouch. What? His pouch was removed from around Mr. Sholmes's waist before he was taken to hospital, and since then it has been touched by no one. D do you mean to say the shot fired by the Skulkin brothers that night? Yes. As your lordship has surmised, it hit this pouch. But that makes no sense whatsoever. We already know the whereabouts of the bullet fired at Mr. Sholmes. It's clearly visible in this photographic print. Two guns from the scene have already been submitted into the court record as evidence. Yes, that of Mr. Windbank, and that belonging to the Skulkin brothers. And the examination of both guns revealed that only a single bullet had been fired from each. But, but that must mean... That's right. We now know that on the night in question, three bullets were fired. However, only two bullets were fired from the guns recovered from the crime scene, and until that incontrovertible inconsistency is somehow explained, we cannot and must not pass judgment. Order! Uh, while this summation examination remains incomplete, the court has been presented with new facts. Facts that would appear to shake the very foundations upon which the case against the defendant has been built. As is my prerogative in this situation, I hereby temporarily suspend the summation examination. By Jupiter! What? Bailiff, bring the witnesses back to the stand at once. Witnesses. Hey, Governor. Were you listening to proceedings while the defense carried out the summation examination? We was, Governor, we was. Perhaps we can dispense with the tedious preamble. Simply answer this one question. A third bullet has been identified at the scene of the crime. What do you make of that? Uh, make of it, Gov. Uh, I don't know. Make nothing of nothing, I'm gonna... Is it one of yours? Go oh, blimey, Gov. Go oh, blimey. No chance. In that case, did you have an accomplice? Well, I, I walk never. The Skulkin brothers work alone. It's just the two of us. It's our trademark. But didn't they say there was a third brother? How soon we forget poor Sulky. Only two of the bullets from the crime scene originated from the firearms we have in evidence. The third bullet was fired from another gun. Where is it? A long way, they... That's a head scratcher. Counsel for the defense. Yes? I should like to hear your thoughts regarding these new developments. The third bullet, and the mysterious missing firearm from whence it came. Thinking back over all the testimony we've heard and all the evidence we've seen, I think I'm starting to, starting to form a picture, a picture of what really happened that night. My lord, I think it's clear what this third bullet tells us about the Sulkin brothers. I mean, I'm convinced it had nothing to do with him. I don't think they had another accomplice. I don't think they had another gun. Somebody shot through that 
did they shoot through the lamp, or was that got, did that get broken earlier? No, it, it had to have been. It had to have been because of the, the photos. The photos show that when Gina was there, the lamp was intact, and afterward, the lamp was shattered. The game has yet to let me acknowledge that that's a thing, but that's a thing. And I suspect that that bullet is responsible. The blood on the disc was in the coat that Gina had. Somehow that blood also ended up on the calendar. I don't think it has anything to do with them, but I have no damned clue what we're doing here. I believe it has nothing to do with them. Hey? Hey, hey that's right. Yeah, nothing to do with us, Gov. We've established that one bullet was fired from each of the two guns already known to the court. The logical conclusion, therefore, is that on the night in question at Mr. Windebank's pawnbrokery, there was another person present in possession of a third firearm. Whilst the brothers may have nothing to do with the third gun, or the bullet fired from it, it's inconceivable that they had nothing to do with the third man. Yes, the brothers were working with an accomplice. An accomplice who was carrying a gun. But then isn't that the first wasn't wasn't that the first option they had an accomplice? An accomplice, you say? A pig swill. These protracted proceedings have already forced us to endure two summation examinations. Yet in all that time there has not been a murmur of a third man, if this apparently wraith like being exists. The court must be shown hard evidence. Without it, this fantasy will be crushed. The prosecution demands answers on two accounts. Firstly, proof, evidence, that this accomplice was ever at the scene of the crime. And secondly, the identity of the spurious character. The Skulkins are lying, I know that. But, how can I ascertain the identity of the person they're hiding? Well, Council? I'm supposed to prove the existence of this accomplice and reveal the person's identity, even. In response to the prosecution's demands, my lord, the defense is... I have no choice. Uh, we can look through the court records, and the only thing... What did we say about this? It was blood, this stain, like we suspected. That's right. Hurley's wonderful concoction soon proved that. I don't suppose... Gina couldn't have been wearing leather gloves that night, could she? Gina would never wear gloves. She's a pickpocket. She relies on being able to feel for fingertips. Could be wrong, but I think I'm being told off. Right, okay, yeah. So this is... We used that as evidence to propose that it was McGill that... No, come on. Hell if I know, but we're going to have to be able to present the answers, aren't we? Otherwise, what else are we going to do? Like, we have no choice. The defense is ready. I believe I can provide all the answers the prosecution demands. So many from this friend, despite the swimming eyes, seem that you seem to have something to say. If they think you had something to say, his promise is to be interesting. I have to push forward now. There's no other option. I need to use every single piece of evidence available to me if it will make a difference. In that case, Council, I would ask you to present the evidence without delay. 
On the night in question, in the moments leading up to the death of the victim, what proof have you that there was a third intruder present at the scene? Uh, well, the, 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 I honestly don't know. says, leading up to the moment. Alright. You know what? I'm not going to fuck this one up. Alright, so it is just presenting presenting the blood. That's literally the only evidence we have is that the, the, the third different color, so... Take that! The evidence is right here, in this portfolio. By Jove, that portfolio again, is it... Do you expect the court to rifle through your papers itself? Be more specific. To claim one of those blood samples proves the pre presence of this third intruder. Well, which one is it? I guess it would be this one, eh? Take that! What am I looking at here? There appears to be some green paint or such like around the bullet hole in the middle of the calendar. That's a blood stain, my lord. A blood stain? Green blood. Curious, even for you. It is the court to understand that the intruder was some inhuman creature. It's something developed by Mr. Sherlock Horlock Holmes. By the great detective. New invention. Stop. Not yet appeared in stories. Stop. It's this, you see. It doesn't have a name yet, though. This fog sprays a chemical that reacts with the different elements in people's blood to change color. Different elements... People's blood. Yes, everyone's blood is slightly different, you see, because it's made up of different elements. So by seeing what color it changes to, you can tell in a flash whose blood it is. Ooh, that brings a whole extra dimension to looking at blood. <laughs> yes, the famous hobby. Talk of blood in courtroom. Stop. Very exciting. Stop. As an example, this one shows the blood of the victim, Mr. Windebank. The uh, striking blue. Yes. So, you see, the green color of this bloodstain on the calendar shows that somebody else was shot in the main part of the shop. Now, uh, hold fire there, young man. It could be from some unrelated incident, couldn't it? No, it's not unrelated. The date showing on the calendar is the date on which Mr. Windebank was killed. Hey, by golly. Therefore, we can assume that whoever was shot was shot on the same day. Then whose blood is it? Well, the Skulkin brothers in the stand don't appear to be suffering from any gunshot injuries. Which means it must be the blood of somebody else. The third intruder, in fact. Objection. Whose identity the court is still waiting to hear? You can't delay this any longer, my learned friend. Who is this alleged third intruder? Well, the only other person of questionable intent... Was this fellow? He appeared accusing Gino of stealing his ticket. He wanted the coat, the coat that had the music box thing in it. With his blood on it. Well, green blood on it, anyway. Take that! The man's name is Egert Benedict. Egert Benedict? Who on earth are you talking about, Council? He paid a visit to Windebank's pawnbrokery on the afternoon before the incident took place. When the accused attempted to deceive the pawnbroker into releasing this article into her possession. And that's right. The man identified by the defense, Mr. Egert Benedict, then attempted to take the article from the defendant by force. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. I believe this filthy pocket thief has just redeemed an article from you, no? Uh, yes, yes, um... The article in question belongs to me. I demand for it to be returned at once. Now that's a lie. What are you trying to pull? Give me back my overcoat, you wastrel. And needless to say... Any music box discs, too. 
Inspector Gregson was there at the time and can to attest can attest to what happened. In the end, it was the inspector himself who took the disc. Can you corroborate this account, Inspector? Uh, yes, my lord. Uh, that's more or less what happened. And in the interests of being thorough, I asked Winterbank for a print showing the fellow. Taken from one of his red-handed recorder gubbins, it's... Yes, that's him talking to Mr. Winterbank that morning. And you claim this man in the brothers is the brother's accomplice? Well, Mr. and Mr. Skulkin? i never seen that geezer before in my life. In my life, Gov, in my life, never seen him. Well, somewhat unsurprisingly, it appears our witnesses disagree with the assertion. I'm sure your lordship recalls my learned Nipponese friend's actual assertion, which was that he could prove the identity of the alleged accomplice. Yes, and I can. Then show us the evidence. I agree. We must see proof that the clean-cut gentleman on the photographs is the filthy criminal you say he is. This is the last piece of evidence. I've had a feeling that something has been missing in this trial from the very start. But now, I'm going to drag it kicking and screaming into the courtroom. Are you ready to present your answer to the court then, counsel? Yes, my lord. The defense will present the evidence now. Proof that the man pictured in this photographic print was, in fact, the person struck by the third bullet. Well, it's got to be this thing then, yes? Take that! As I mentioned before on the afternoon of the day in question, the defendant attempted, deceitfully admittedly, to reclaim this disc from Windebanks. Which is when the aforementioned Eggert Benedict appeared on the scene, I believe. This man then attempted to purloin the article from the defendant's possession, no? That's correct, my lord. I myself was present at the time. It was following this that a minor incident occurred. But of course, uh, here's the disc for you. Very well. Then I shall bid you farewell. I say goodbye to style. What? <laughs> Wait a minute, that disc! He's mine! What do you think you're doing, you little tramp? You've, you've drunk blood, you feel the... Uh, do we remember that part? Is that how the blood got on the disc? Being a music box disc, it has countless small but sharp metal protrusions over its surface. Those protrusions cause Mr. Benedict's finger to bleed. And the resulting smear of blood is still visible on the disc now. Goodness, a blood stain, is it? My assistant and I have just analyzed the blood stain here in this very courtroom. Using my trusty fogger gun. Yes. And we added the results to this portfolio. I say it's green. It's the exactly the same color as the blood around the calendar. The evidence is conclusive. The man calling himself Mr. Egert Benedict, who was at Windebanks earlier in the day, is the accomplice who was present at the scene of the crime that same night. So there was someone there. Look at those two brothers now. They're sweating buckets. What, what are you talking about? It's boiling in here. My lord, it is the opinion of the defense that Mr. Egert Benedict should be summoned to the courtroom to testify. It would certainly seem that we can ill afford to ignore this gentleman's apparent presence. Objection! This has gone on long enough now. This flagrant ignorance of the mechanics of law. Herlock Sholmes, you say? Yes, I have heard the name. The protagonist in a series of short stories from the vulgar, for the vulgar classes, a god of detection or some such. And now you employ chemical substances devised by this fantastical persona in the highest court in the land. Do you expect us to take you seriously? Samples made by this plaything are not fit to be called evidence. Hmm. So the bloodstain turned the shade of green, what of it? Is to you successfully proving that no other blood in the world would turn the same color? Well, I guess we're all gonna have to prick our fingers in, eh? 
And pray do not even think of suggesting we should take Mr. Schultz's word for it. Is he right? Is Mr. Sherlock's her Mr. Sherman's a girl girl show? Oh, I was a great detective. You told me that I would get away from it. I knew it would come to this. Of course, Mr. Sherman's invention isn't going to be recognized by any official body, but what other choice did I have? Hmm. I'm just remembering what Father Christmas over there said before about how he was temporarily suspending the summation examination. Huh? In other words, the examination isn't over yet, is it? My good grief. What did you just say, young girl? And in summation, in a summation examination, the decision as to whether or not the trial continues is in the hands of the six jurors, isn't it? So the way I see it, it doesn't matter what sudden other people think of Hurley's invention. At least, not for now. Yes, she's right. Young lady, you have quite the devious mind. It really just comes down to one thing. Whether these ladies and gentlemen of the jury are convinced by what you say, Bruno. Is that about right, would you say? Or did I misunderstand something? Unbelievable. Mr. Sholmes's partner is a force to be reckoned with. Iris Wilson, sharpshooter. After that shrewd precis of the situation from an entirely unexpected source, it must be acknowledged that the previous summation examination has yet to reach its conclusion. This is absurd. I really should give him the Squidward voice instead, because I feel like at this point, that's just kind of his whole persona. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the court now looks to you for your final leanings in this matter. As proud citizens of Her Majesty's Britain, I'm sure you will come to fair and just conclusions. So then, state your final decisions in turn, please. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. 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 Not guilty. Two call guilty and four call not guilty. So is the such is the outcome of the summation examination. Objection. My lord, with all due respect, this is an outrage. The prosecution refuses to accept this decision. On what grounds? These jurors are persuaded by some half-baked concoction devised by a pretender to real police work, and they are too ignorant to be trusted with the judgment of anyone's guilt. I'm sorry, Lord Van Zeeks, but the outcome of the summation examination cannot be ignored. The trial will continue. <laughs> Nevertheless, we find ourselves in a rather awkward situation. The defense has very reasonably requested the subpoena of a new witness. Sadly, I fear that would be impossible. What? The name the gentleman gave for himself, Egget Benedict, is quite clearly false. I don't believe it. Eggs Benedict is false? What are you kidding? Just when I managed to prove the man was there that night. Um, could, could I say something? Who was that, please? Who spoke? Um, it was me, my lord. Juror number five. What have you to say, madam? If possible, Inspector. Me, uh, ma'am. I wonder if you might show the photographic print to me again, the one in which the gentleman is shown. Oh, right, yes, uh, this one you mean, of Mr. Benedict. Yes, there's no doubt in my mind. Juror number five, you don't mean to say you know this man? Yes, I know him. Nanny? Good gracious! The coincidences here are unbelievable! The order... Juror number five, how on earth... I am a communications officer. Stop. As we can clearly see. The gentleman in the photograph is... Stop. Also a communications officer. Stop. He works in my office. Stop. 
very talented operator, in fact. Stop. He should be in the communication station now. Stop. Tapping away on the telegraph. Stop. This doesn't seem right somehow. I can't put my finger on why, but it doesn't feel right. Like, she's going to be biased about this. Hmm. I suppose we all imagined the accomplice would be some sort of hardened criminal. It's a bit unexpected to find out that he was as res has a respectable job by day, whatever he gets up to at night. He, clearly, then, is the foreign agent, well, double agent, or whatever, the informant. If he is using his position in the telegraph station to telegraph information elsewhere, or inware, or something... Where, whatever happened to the Japanese inspector, by the way? I still don't remember. Did he go back to Japan? I thought he was still lurking around after he got off the ship. Yes, I suppose that's it. I suppose that's why I felt something was wrong. If the gentleman is at London's communication station, we should have... or we should be able to subpoena him within the hour. Lord Van Zeeks, if you please. Uh, yes, my lord. Make the necessary arrangements with all haste. As your lordship bids. The court will recess for one hour. When the new witness arrives, we shall reconvene to hear the gentleman's testimony. Inspector Gregson. Uh, yes, my lord. I should like to hear from you specifically about events at the pawnbrokery on the day in question. Go to my chambers during the recess. Uh, yes, sir, my lord. Very well. Court is adjourned until 1.40 p.m. Well, well, well. This is still the first of two games, by the way. I think we're going to take a break when this thing's all done and over with. And i got to make sure I'm saving correctly because of the whole debacle with the last couple episodes. Part 3. Have an hour. I'll see you next time.